Well, hey, I just have a few announcements as we are looking forward to the season ahead, um, a new year. We are really excited. We are going to be starting a new, not only sermon series that will go throughout the entire year, but also a reading plan. And it is called Read Together, Be Together. So we will be starting January 1st, a reading plan through the Bible that will go chronologically. So we will start with Genesis and Matthew. So we'll be doing Old Testament and New Testament together, but go chronologically through them both for the entire year. And Tim will base his sermons off of that reading plan. And so it'll be really great opportunity for us to kind of unify not only in what we're doing here, but throughout the week. So it's read together, be together. So uh, be looking for those reading plans. We don't have them this week, but they will be out next week in the next couple of weeks because they start January 1st. So get yours today or next week. Um, They also, the reading plan will be posted on the website too. So if you grab one and lose your paper, no big deal. Go to the website, okay? All right, Christmas Eve services. We will be doing two Christmas Eve services, one at four and one at six. We're doing two just to hopefully spread out numbers so that um, makes it comfortable for everybody. This will be a family service. Kids will be in service. We will have lots of goodie bag activities, things to keep them busy. Um, And it will be a candlelight service. So um, come prepared, uh, 4 p.m. or 6 p.m. And also, if you know already, hey, I say those numbers and you're like, oh, we're at the 4 o'clock for sure. Um, Could you please write your name? We have a couple clipboards out there, one with the 4 o'clock and 6 o'clock. We're trying to just gauge how many people we might have. So if you already know, could you write your name just on there so we kind of have an idea of what those services might feel like. Um, And then the next thing is we have been talking about, and I don't have one of those flyers, but our Advent partners um, in this season. We've had a few partners locally as well as globally that we are partnering with. And this week, we're focusing on uh, our Bible translators, Micah and Victoria, who Micah actually was here a few weeks ago, shared what he's doing. Um, But that offering is being taken next Sunday. So that is a special offering. It's on addition to any kind of regular giving that you do. It's focused for those partners. And what we will do is take that this next Sunday, and then it will be divided out between... I think four, three or four partners that we have. So please pray about that as a family. Be thinking about how you want to be prepared to give next week. We will be doing that specifically for that next week. Um, and we are going to watch a quick video update as well from the Bible translators for, from My- Micah and Victoria. Um, Micah recently got to go on an investigative trip to the, actually the country that they are going to. And so he has a little update for us. So we're going to watch that. Hey, Living Rock. Hey. Hey, good to see you guys again. And Merry Christmas. Yeah, (laughs) Merry Christmas. This is Victoria. You didn't get to see her last time. Hi. Um, Hey, just to give you a reminder of uh, who we are, we are uh, the Welches, Micah and Victoria. And we have two daughters, Joanna, who's four, and Adeline, who is almost two. And we are with Pioneer Bible Translators, and uh, we're Uh, preparing to do language development, leading to Bible translation, literacy, and church planting among minority language groups in North Africa. Uh, Recently, uh, I was able to take an investigative trip uh, to the part of North Africa where we're hoping to work. Uh, I was able to kind of see where we might live as a family and where we might do uh, do these uh, linguistic uh, language development projects. And guys, it was really cool. Uh, It was like the New Testament church uh, with the things that God is doing there. Uh, I got to attend a baptism service among one of the minority language groups where over 50 people were baptized as they were singing uh, hymns and songs in their own language. Uh, I also heard a story about another linguist uh, who was doing similar work that I'm hoping to do, and he was uh, helping a Muslim people group develop uh, an alphabet for their language for the first time. And uh, at the beginning of his linguistic workshops, he always did a little devotional where he shared stories from the Bible. And because of this workshop and because of his sharing stories from the Word, uh, people in this uh, community 
uh, gain an interest in who Jesus is. And today there are disciples uh, and followers of Jesus and grow, growing churches uh, in this uh, people group for the first time. Mm. Uh, another thing I got to do was uh, go to uh, the community checking of uh, Matthew chapter 6 for another minority uh, language group. And during the, the community checking, one of the old men uh, raised his hand and, and uh, reminded uh, the people group of a word for faith uh, that they uh, hadn't used very often or, or hadn't known, but it turned out to be the perfect word uh, to translate faith in the, in the New Testament. And so now they'll be able to use that word throughout the rest of their Bible translation. Uh, it was really, really cool to see uh, the work that God is doing and to, to think that God has called our family to be a part of it and has, uh, has also called our financial and prayer partners in the mm -hmm. States, uh, churches and individuals, to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. So this coming year is going to be an exciting and big year, and we are excited to see what God is going to do and uh, the ways that he will work. Um, our main goal uh, this year will be raising the remainder of our field budget, yeah. and that will be through um, monthly and or annually uh, financial partners. And we look to um, moving to the field um, by the fall. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're hoping to around like September, October to uh, move as a family to the field. And uh, we're at about 50% or so of the field budget that uh, we're needing to raise. And so that'll be our big goal for this next year is to, to, to meet that uh, financial goal. Um, but anyway, we're so excited uh, for the way that we've been able to share with you guys and, and the way that, uh, that you are partnering with us as a church. Mm -hmm. And uh, we look forward to uh, hopefully seeing you in person sometime this next year. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And we wish you a very Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas, guys. Well, I hope that was just helpful to get a picture of what Mike is doing. I did get to talk to him on the phone and man, it, it just, there was a lot of neat things that God is doing. Uh, in these communities where they will be translating scripture. And so the way we get to partner with them is through prayer and, and, and resources to, to help them be able to operate there. Micah and Victoria will um, hopefully be able to be up here um, in this next year, uh, again, to just share what God is doing. Uh, they went through a crazy week this week. She's been doing schooling um, in order to uh, for her part of just being ready to go to the field. Um, he had a lot of deadlines as well that were coming up um, this week. And so uh, he, he was looking forward to kind of getting through this week and then um, they'll be able to rest because he just got back last Monday actually from a three-week journey, journey in uh, North Africa. So continue to pray for them. And again, the, the Advent, that giving will be next week. Well, this, this week we are uh, continuing on through Advent. Uh, we've talked about the hope, the peace, and this week the love that Jesus brings. I think the question that we all have and, and in our culture seems to be very prominent, what is love? How do you define love? Is it a romantic story where the guy falls in love with the girl gazing deeply into her eyes saying, I love you? Is it Will Ferrell yelling from the top of his lungs, I'm in love and I'm in love and I don't care who knows it? Is that love? I can remember, I don't remember how long we had been dating. It was a while. Because I, I took that seriously. I didn't want to say I loved Melissa without some sort of uh, commitment behind that. Because there was a seriousness to that, I know. But I would say even at the time I said, I love you, maybe a year into us dating, maybe six months, I don't know. We dated for a while, so I, I'm a slow mover in that way. Um, but at that point, did I really know what love required? Eh, probably not. Is love vows at the altar confessing to stay together till death do us part? Is it at the first fight in a marriage and a willingness to humble yourself and apologize? 
Is it giving of one's desires for the betterment of another? Is it a mother getting up in the middle of the night to care for or feed the child? I would say yes. Love takes on many different forms, but what do we learn when we think of the arrival or the advent of love? What is love? I'd say I would define it in this way. A steadfast desire and an action based on the best, desiring the best for another person. So when we think of love, how do we know what love is? How do we define what's best? 1 John 4, 7 and 8 John says this way, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God. Because what? God is love. So the very nature of love, we can only define it by knowing God. He is the one who determines what love is looks like when we realize that God is love that to, to truly understand love we have to understand him then we get to look to the person of Jesus Christ God in the flesh revealed to see how love was lived out our mission statement that we have here at the church is To love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There's no greater commandment than these. So when we think of Jesus' arrival and what that looked like, what do we learn about love? First thing I notice is that our love is a response to the Father's love. Our love is a response to the Father's love. Knowing and believing God loves you is essential for us to know love, what love is. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he what? He gave. So we see a little bit of love through that. But it's this response that we see in 1 John four nineteen. We love because he first loved us. It's only as a response to that love. So even Jesus was responding to the Father's love. See, since the beginning of time, God was wanting to show this. And in Adam and Eve, he had perfect love for them. But what did they do? They didn't trust that love. They went outside of it, right? They said, well, God, you said don't eat of this, but I don't think you have my best interest in mind. And so I'm going to go do my own way. I'm going to buy into the lie. But Jesus said this, if you love me, you will obey my commands. And so what we see in Jesus, his response to the Father's love was one of complete trust. His love lived out for us was really the love of the Father shown through him. He was responding in complete trust to how the Father said to live out before us. So Jesus' connection and relationship to the Father was essential for him to know how to love the world. See, this is critical for us to understand this and get this in the right order. Jesus' relationship to his Father directed how he showed love. If we get that reversed and begin to try to love the world without knowing the Father, we will love a very different way. And it won't be true love. That's why Jesus said the greatest commandment is love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. This relationship between him and us 
is of utmost importance. Everything else is triggered off of that relationship because we see that in Jesus Christ. He said this in John 5, 19. I tell you the truth, the son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the father doing. Whatever the father does, the son also does. Complete obedience to his father's will. He continues on in 530, I can do nothing on my own. I judge as God tells me. Therefore, my judgment is just because I carry out the will of the one who sent me, not my own will. He knew his father loved him perfectly and had his best interest in mind. And so we see him live out this love towards us. You see, knowing we are loved and responding to our Father's love is our first priority. And this comes in many different ways, through prayer, both corporate and personal. We connect our heart to the Father and we learn and we begin to express ourselves to Him and we're also saying, God, would you speak to me? Would you show me how to love? It comes in communion when we will take this at the end of service, but it reminds us the the love that that God showed us through Jesus was a self-sacrificing love, an all-in kind of love. We also know the heart of God through Scripture because we see these are His words that He has given us. That's why we're going to read through it in the next year. Because I believe... For a believer, we have access to Scripture. That's what Micah and Victoria are going to do. They're trying to give opportunity for others to know that. Here we have it probably at more easily accessible. And yet I wonder sometimes how often we really recognize these are the words of life and press into it. And so as a church, as we read through that, we will understand God's love and His heart for us. And so our response then becomes one of trust to his love. The arrival of love through Jesus. You see, Jesus completely trusted the plan of his father. He trusted that God's love was completely for him, for his best, no matter what his life on earth would look like. What directed Jesus more than anything was a trust in the love of his father. You think about this. You think about the arrival of Jesus to this world. And I don't know if you have thought about it often or it's impacted you. We have this. It's a little bit hard to see. um, But we have this nativity scene here. Jesus came as a baby. You ever thought like, wow, that's kind of weird. Like, and, and how vulnerable that is. The creator of the world became dependent on his creation. Is that just like, what? Why? Why would you do that? Yet that is the way God's love was shown. Jesus came completely dependent on Mary for sustenance and life. Kind of boggles my mind. I mean, it's uh, still something that I'm like, wow, that's just so weird to think the Creator would do that. And yet this is the place that He came, vulnerable as a child. You see, He could have come as a young boy, even a man, right? A little bit more self-defense, a little bit more ability to stand up for Himself. But that's not the kind of love God wanted to show. It was a love that was completely at the mercy of other humans from a person who had every right or every position to not be there. He has authority over us. And yet what he showed was one that came humble and vulnerable. This is the mystery of Christmas when we think of the arrival of love in the form of a baby, complete and utter dependence. There's a sense of vulnerability And I'm all in. C.S. Lewis says this about love. To love at all is to be vulnerable. 
Love anything and your heart will be wrung about and possibly broken. If you want to make sure of keeping it intact, you must give it to no one. Not even an animal. Wrap it carefully round with hobbies and little luxuries. Avoid all entanglements. Lock it up safe in the casket or coffin of your selfishness. But in the casket, safe, dark, motionless, airless, it will change. It will not be broken. It will become unbreakable, impenetrable, and irredeemable. You see, love is meant to be in vulnerability. That's what true love is. I understand a little more of love now after 15 years of marriage. The self-sacrifice and, and the things that it requires of us. You do too in relationships that you're in. There's a vulnerability and a self-sacrifice. And there's a trust that the other person has your best interest in mind. This is the love that Jesus showed was a complete trust that the Father had his best interest at heart. And it put him in vulnerable places as a baby and it brought him to the cross. In the Garden of Gethsemane, what was Jesus' prayer? God, I don't want to do this, right? Father, don't make me do this. That was his cry as he sweat drops of blood intense pressure and this desire every human part of him was saying I don't want to go to this cross and yet God said this is what love requires and Jesus' submission to that was to say not my will but yours be done because he trusted the father had what was best in mind for him. This is the arrival of love. Jesus showed us a vulnerable love, but also showed us a love that the Father's love for him was true and trustworthy. He did what he said he would do because we now see God was faithful. Philippians 2, 5 through 10, the Apostle Paul writes it in this way. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not count equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. You see, God was true to his word. It cost Jesus the life on the cross, but he raised him from the dead to a glorious place. God's love was true and honest for Jesus, and it caused Jesus to live this love out towards us. As he obeyed the Father's plan, he is now honored in heaven and on earth. And what's greater than that? Greatest honor to him because he completely trusted the love of the Father. So our, our love, is, it's a response, this first relationship to the Father in trust and saying, I know you have your best for me, so I want to live that out. Whatever that looks like to this world, it may cost me dearly, but I believe your plan and your way. And the second thing I notice is our love is a reflection of the Father's love. And I've kind of alluded to this a little bit throughout. 
Jesus mirrored the love of the Father. I don't do anything my Father doesn't tell me to do. So all he was doing was the earthly living out of that love. And that's what we're made to do as well. To be in the image of Jesus, which is trusting God's love, keeping our lives aligned with his, and shining that to the world. So I want to give you this example here. Let's see if this is set up right. I don't know. We'll find out. Okay. Is that bright? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Right? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, who's getting it right now? Uh, no. um, yeah, Ed, you're like, that's blinding me right now. This, this uh, let's turn it this way. There we go. Okay. I'm blinding some of you. Try not to. Um, this is the Father's light. We're made to reflect that light, Correct. So now, this, this is that light, right, being reflected, it's blinding. It's like, okay, yeah, I see that light. Stop shining me in the eyes. This is what happens, though, I think, when we get this out of order and what love looks like. Our mirror slides over here. What do you see? What do you see? Do you see yourself? You might see other people around you. What do you see? We're made to reflect the Father. And so if this is in alignment, then we're going to reflect him to the world. But if we start pulling off over here, we're going to love like the world loves. And the light of the Lord is not really shining from us. So our, the love, that, the arrival of love was Jesus being a reflection, a perfect reflection of the Father's love. That's what we're to imitate. A perfect reflection of the Father's love. So our position, one more time, should be this. Yeah, Chris, you're like, quit blinding me. Sorry if you have any sort of a, I didn't, I didn't put it on this setting. You know, I really could have messed with you there. Or is it at, uh, yeah, the flashing, yeah, that would have, that would drove me crazy, sorry. We're made to be a reflection of God's love. And it comes as we are perfectly aligned to him. So what is God's love? 1 Corinthians, Paul writes this. And, he, and he's coming out of this section. If you look on either side of 1 Corinthians 13, it's about being filled with the Spirit. Being filled with the Spirit of God. And yet almost... Pursuing the gifts over the giver. And so it's been more about the gifts and the expression. I want to worship the way I want to worship. There's a pride in it. And he's saying, hold on, hold on. You can have all these things. But if you don't have love, what is it? That was lame. It's, you know, it's just not great. Mike could probably do a better job on the drums with that one, but uh, um, he says it's a clanging cymbal. It's like you're not loving well. It's just, even though you're saying, this is God's spirit, this is what he's doing, you're, you're missing it. So what is love? He gives us a little snapshot in this. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful, or proud, or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. That's what we're meant to mirror. 
And can I encourage you that it comes as our relationship is right with the Father. There was so much more about love. My biggest struggle was trying to isolate this down. Read, read Romans 12 through 15. Read 1 John. Ah, so good sections of scripture written about God's love. Read through those this week. Take time to meditate on those sections of scripture. Romans 12 through 15, 1 John, the whole letter. But as we come to a time of communion, Jesus' greatest act of love was one of sacrifice for each one of us. And I think it's a good opportunity for us to reflect on our hearts and lives. Lord, where am I at? Am I reflecting you to this world? Or have I shifted out of alignment and I'm just mirroring the people around me? Help me to hold to you, Jesus. That's why when we walked in today, I said I believe worship is important because that is a way that we connect our heart to the Father. And it's a way that we respond So there is importance to that. Those things we hold on to that connect our hearts to the Father, but not in an arrogant, proud way, but in a way to say, God, I want you and only you. So as we come to communion, we'll take a few minutes to reflect on where our heart's at. I want to invite Brett and Gretel up. They've written a a song about love and the arrival of love and And I want us to reflect and listen to that. If you don't have communion, if you didn't get one on your way in, their little um, baskets, Brian, if you can just raise your hand and he'll get it over to you if you didn't get one. Um, But grab those. And then let's uh, reflect on this as Brett and Gretel sing this morning. your love 
receive this let me pray you'll see there's two tabs and the first one gets you to the bread father we thank you that you sent your son jesus christ this was your love your plan expressed through him he only did what you asked him to and so the love that you have was poured out through jesus and it cost him the, his body was broken this was the kind of love that didn't value his own life, but was willing to lay it down for the sake of others as you required it. So God, as we reflect on his body being broken, Jesus, thank you. May we also live that example to this world. Not loving our lives so much that we're not willing to lay them down for you. Your way, your plan is best. Go ahead and receive that. Well, we know that we will never perfectly reflect you. And so the blood of Jesus was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. To wash us clean, to, to cover the faults, and in your righteousness, Jesus, we stand alone. So you cover our imperfections, you cover our failures. This is the good news of the gospel. That even though we will miss it and we won't perfectly align and shine our light, shine your light to the world. Your blood covers us and washes us clean. Would you continue to move us more and more 
into the image of your son Jesus Christ so that we show this world a God who loves and loves them dearly. Go ahead and receive that together. Well, church, would you stand as we conclude this morning? Well, may we be a church that loves God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, that that relationship to Him is of utmost importance to us. And then out of the overflow of what He he does in us, may we shine His light and love a world in need of Him. May that be the way that we see to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then love our neighbors as ourselves. So good to be with you this morning. Um, I hope that you find just encouragement through gathering together through this morning that your soul, your spirit was lifted. Uh, Something I don't often do, but uh, I really feel like it's it's been fun for us as a family. Uh, Brett and Gretel do, do, they do music. That's what they do for their living. Um, they do. They did a Christmas album, and uh, we've been listening to it. Uh, this one's not on it, but I just want you guys to know that if you're ever interested about just finding that stuff, they're here. They worship with us, and they would never say that. Um, but I, I think that if you want some good Christmas music to listen to, uh, check them out. They've got a good Christmas album they just put out. You can ask them about it and find out more about that. But uh, I love that they love to write music. Because then we get to do songs that, hey, it it fits right into what we're talking about today. God's gifted us in many different ways, and I I love that we get to enjoy that. So thank you guys so much for being here this morning. Again, we'll be back next week. Christmas Eve, uh, whatever service you're planning on, it just helps us to know. And then if you're undecided, we can say, hey, this one's real full right now. Maybe uh, shoot for another one. That sign up is out there. Offering, if you came prepared to give, is in the back on your way out. Thank you guys so much. Look forward to seeing you again next week.